We had 30 days in New Zealand in a van. Here's how we did it. The places we went and the places we recommend you see on your trip. We landed in Auckland and picked up our camper. I used to live in New Zealand in a little town called Devonport. It's about an hour from the airport. I love it there. It's a beautiful high-end town and a good entry point for the trip. Neck Beach was just a couple of steps outside my front door, one of my favorites. North Head was another of my hometown favorites. You can wander the grassy hills and the bunkers underneath. It was fairly easy for us to find good places to camp in Devonport. Sleeping in your car in New Zealand is completely legal if you're self-contained. Finding spots to sleep isn't too hard. Most of the places that you're not allowed to camp are marked pretty clearly. But if you're looking for a last minute spot, you can always use an app called CamperMate. Just an hour away from Auckland is Piha Beach. It's a little town hidden amongst the cliffs. There's good waves and a nice little surf community. As we were driving away, some kids grabbed our van and we towed them on their skateboards. That's kind of the vibe of the place. My main recommendation for Waipo Caves is to go deeper. A steep muddy bank almost made us turn around, but once you've walked about 15 minutes into the pitch black cave, you'll see the most beautiful galaxy of glowworms on the roof. The area around the caves is gorgeous too. It's a great place to camp for the night and meet new friends. We met Bethany and shared a game of Monopoly deal and some snacks. We also met some fire dancers here too. The roads in and out of Waipo Cave are beautiful, but that being said, a lot of the roads in New Zealand are gorgeous. We had a quick swim at this beautiful white sand beach. Supposedly there's some amazing trails up in the cliff tops. Even with 30 days, it felt like there was always too many things to do and not enough time. Mai Tai Bay was stunning. It was one of our favorite camp spots the entire trip. We also got some epic shots here. There were some weird exoskeleton type jellyfish swimming in the water, but they didn't sting, so it was all good. A New Zealand road trip isn't complete without pulling over and just enjoying the random beautiful places you find along the way. Some of our best times are made on some of these random stops. We would sword fight with sticks, and we found some amazing flower fields to take photos in. Also, one of the most magical things about being on a road trip like this is being able to stop wherever you want, not having a schedule. Make sure you break down at least once. These locals literally cut their seatbelt out of their back seat to tow us out of the ditch. Kauri trees are gigantic. This one is a couple thousand years old, one of the largest trees on the planet. The hot water beach is incredibly touristy, but it's such a surreal experience. Mount Munganui is one of my childhood favorites. We used to camp at the base of the mountain and my mom would read Harry Potter to me. I recommend the hike to the top and the beach to the bottom with a million shells. Just shh, don't tell anyone so we can keep the beach pristine. Rotorua is a big town with a lot to offer. The Maori villages are a good way to immerse yourself into the local customs and history. Absorbing was amazing. It kind of made me motion sick, but it was one of Julia's favorite things in the entire trip. Hot springs occur naturally all over this area. My favorite natural spot is Kerosene Creek. You can feast on wild blackberries. Just wash out some of the lakes are not safe to swim in. Or my favorite commercial spot for hot springing is the Polynesian Spa. Hobbiton is another must do. I kind of wanted to live there forever or build my own little farm like this. It's super pretty and inspiring. We stopped super briefly at Mount Taranaki, but we couldn't swim because the trail was under construction. I've heard that further up the trail, there's amazing lava tube water slides. Three Sisters was one of my favorite places in New Zealand. Everything was much grander than I imagined. We had the entire beach almost completely to ourselves. We also took some of our favorite photos of the trip. As we were heading down to Wellington, we stopped and we camped outside of this amazing aviary. There were also wild hedgehogs. We were on a mission to see more natural beauty, so we didn't stay in Wellington long. But from the little time I spent there, I was surprised at all the amazing shops and interesting culture. From Wellington, we took the ferry across to the South Island. It took about three hours. This spot has some of the clearest water in the world, but if you want to swim, you have to do it downriver. Punakaki Beach is a nice little stop on the way down the East Coast. We collected a bunch of colored rocks. I think some of it might have been jade. The drive down the west coast of New Zealand was one of the most stunning drives we did the entire time. Maybe one of my favorite roads in the world. Hokitika Gorge is said to be one of the rainiest places on earth, but we didn't let it stop us. Right after our adventure, we drove 10 minutes down the road and it was completely dry and warm. We stayed on the beach at this campground. The only thing to watch out for is the little bitey bugs. They're all over the South Island and they suck. Route six to Wanaka is another one of our favorite roads. You drive through lush forest tunnels down glacier-carved riverbeds, and alongside lakes in between towering mountains. I love this little random jumping spot. The water is pretty cold though. We got lucky and came at the perfect time to shoot the Wanaka tree. There was lots to do in Queenstown. I would have spent a lot more time here and money if I could have. 
They have snowboarding in the winter and amazing mountain biking courses, but we settled for the third tallest bungee jump in the world and have one of the best burgers we've ever had. Milford Sound was one of the highlights of the trip. The drive-in is epic. It's a little winding road between gigantic mountains. They say it's the wettest place in the world at sea level, but our day was beautiful. This is a place not to miss. We came to Curio Bay looking for dolphins, but we didn't find any. What we did find was beautiful cliff tops perfect for naps. Larnack Castle. We spent an entire day walking the castle in the gardens. It has an interesting history and it puts you back in time so you can imagine what it would have been like to live in the 1800s. If you're looking for a peaceful time spent in plants, this is a great spot. It surpassed my expectations. Elephant Rocks is an otherworldly looking spot where rocks jut out from the surrounding grassy hills. We share the space with sheep who hide in the shadows to get out of the sun. As you can tell, I had an amazing time jumping and flipping around here. If you're a climber, it's a great spot for that too. Make sure you grab some wild apples, they taste great. <laughs> we came to this lake for the iconic blue water in a swim. It didn't disappoint. Castle Hill was featured in Lord of the Rings, and I completely understand why. We spent the afternoon there, but we could have spent much longer, maybe even days exploring. We had a couple of extra hours to kill, so we checked out the Viaduct and Devil's Punch Bowl Waterfall. Both are pretty cool, but not the highest on our list. Christchurch has a lot to offer, including the coolest playground in the world. They say it's for kids and adults alike. Don't be afraid to jump in there with the kids. The Botanic Gardens in Christchurch were my favorite that I've ever been to. We fell asleep on a little park bench and got lost trying to find our way out. The Wildlife Reserve was also amazing. We got to meet and pet so many cute, snuggly little farm bumpkins. For all the incredible animals they had there, our favorites were the baby pigs. Unlike a lot of zoos, you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time to interact with the animals. Adrenaline Forest is a good place to test your fear of heights. You have three hours to do as many obstacles as you can. Julia finished the entire course. The rock slide at Rere scared me more than I would have imagined. It looks big, powerful, and has rock ridges that poke out. It was also one of my favorite experiences of the whole trip. Thanks for watching, I hope our trip gave you some ideas. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.